Hello, my name is Sabrina Moreland and I'm one of the librarians here at Walter State and I'm going to explain some basic elements about research that you will need not only for your English 1010 classes but for any research assignment you have at Walter State and beyond. I'm also going to talk about some terminology that accompanies research that you'll need to know and I'm going to mention the best databases to go to for um, your English 1010 assignments. So first off, just in general, you need lots of different things for research on any level. And so it's always a good idea to use a search engine, such as Google, to get some more background information, to figure out the path you want to take, um, to possibly brainstorm uh, more terms, and to really get a good grasp of your topic. Now, of course, when you use a search engine, you're just getting the most popular results. And so when you use information from the internet at large, you often have to do more work to evaluate that information. You'll have to ask who's the author, when was this written, what makes it credible, um, as opposed to using those databases that now your instructors expect you to use at this level of your education. And so a database is essentially a digital collection of different types of information. So it could be articles, uh, popular sources like magazines or periodicals. It could be trade publications, images, videos. And all of this content has been organized in a certain way. And so that's what makes it a little more difficult to search in compared to something like Google. It's also a good idea to have some basic reference available and I do have the symbol there for Wikipedia. You can go to Wikipedia to get some ideas uh, about your research and to grasp your concept but we never want to use Wikipedia in our research paper. The databases do have some additional basic reference sources available as well, um, so you could consult something like an online encyclopedia through the database to get some more credible information. And then lastly, because you have to document all of the information that you are citing or paraphrasing, you will need a citation guide to consult as well. It's also good to know where to go to get help. That's a, a big part of this as well. And so my contact information is there at the top. Um, I am labeled as a research coach or a librarian. And that's my email address, my office phone number, and I am embedded in your eLearn class list as SR Moreland. And that's probably the quickest and best way to contact me is just to click on my name in eLearn and we can communicate back and forth regarding your research questions. If you need help with the thesis statement or organization of your paper, the actual composition, then the Writing Center is a great place to go as well. Um, Jennifer Mays runs the Writing Center, and I believe that the Writing Center is also embedded in your eLearn class list. And lastly, if you need help with anything else, math, science, speech, whatever, the Tutoring Center is also a good place to go for additional assistance. So whenever you're doing research, and you may have already completed this step, it's always a great idea to brainstorm and try to create a research plan. Sometimes we make these concept maps where we have our main ideas and we branch out um, using, um, you know, synonyms and related terms, um, just anything that sort of ties with our concept. Um, you might have created an outline that will help you focus your research and your writing. Um, the reason we need to do this, especially when we're using databases, is because databases use subject headings. And so these are predefined vocabulary. Um, these words have been tagged by an information specialist or an organization or an expert in some way. Um, one of the ways to think about this is hashtags and social media. So on Instagram, if you have like hashtag book of the month, if you search for this, everything with that hashtag will appear. And this is just the way databases work. It's just less interesting to some of you. Um, so we want to figure out what the subject headings are so that we can get the best results. And sometimes when we go to the databases, we plug in the terms that we think would work and we don't get as many results. So if you can come up with many, many related terms, it will be easier for you to conduct the research when you get to the databases. 
So you guys are approaching your third paper in English 1010. It's a pro it's like multi-layered. It's a problem solution piece where you are comparing and contrasting the two solutions that you have researched. So a sample I might use um, that not many people have used in the past, and that's why I chose it, was to think about this problem of food poisoning. It's an ongoing issue in the United States. And asking, well, how could this problem be solved? And what are some of the solutions for that? So that's my problem. And now I want to research some solutions that I can compare for my paper. One of the ways that I like to brainstorm that's super helpful for English 1010 for all of your assignments is to ask journalistic questions. So who, what, where, when, why, how. And whenever you ask these questions, you're able to narrow your focus for your research. So I might ask, well, who benefits or who's affected or involved? Naming a specific population to focus on. What is the problem exactly? The nature of the issue? Are there types involved? So I could say salmonella. Where does it occur? Um, are, is it most visible or prevalent in a certain place? Or where did it originate? Um, certain locations. So I might look for hospitals as a place for uh, food poisoning to take place. When in time, so historically, when did it develop? Um, when did it first appear? Um, it could be a specific time, like the Dole spinach outbreak in 2006. You could be very narrow here. You could ask, why does this matter? Why would anybody write about this or address this problem? Um, causes and effects. Well, people die from it, for one, so that's a pretty big deal. So I could talk about the fatalities involved. And then lastly, how. So this could be the solutions we're looking for, regulations future impact um, and so maybe I focus on storage practices as one of the solutions so this is just a quick way to narrow your information down and just as a sample I've really extended my list to get to my narrowed research question and so you don't have to spend as much time on one of these but you can see there are all kinds of different routes that you can take all these are related terms that I could plug into uh, Google to get a foundation I could have used the internet at large or basic reference to get these ideas um, and then I could use them in the databases to get specific results So eventually by narrowing and, and doing all that brainstorming, um, I've changed the way I want to approach this because that's part of research as well. Sometimes you start off with one idea and you don't find what you're looking for because no one's written about it yet. Um, that's a possibility or it's such a new concept that you can't find any information. So eventually um, I've landed on E. coli causing death and illness in consumers and I'm going to look at two solutions, either government inspections is a route to take or safe handling practices and so I would be able to think about these in relation to my related terms and how I could approach that in the databases the databases that you want to use for this class and they're really very helpful for other classes are these three so Opposing Viewpoints, Academic Search Premier, and the eBook Academic Collection. And I have sent um, three separate videos that explain how to use these that you'll want to take a look at. It demonstrates all the features and how to approach navigation of these databases. And the reason we're using databases now is that our instructors want us to consult scholarly articles. And so anytime you hear that you're required to use a scholarly source, a peer-reviewed source, or an academic journal article, that's the, like those are all the same thing. They're synonymous terms. These are really, really credible uh, research-based uh, documents. They're written by researchers or experts or scholars. They have shown how they can you know set up their research um, what they've consulted they always have their own sources listed and the big thing is they have been evaluated or refereed by other experts and so this is big process that this information goes through to deem if it's you know ready to be published and for us as scholars to view and so once we get it you can trust it um, it's done by experts and reviewed by experts so be sure that you check out these three videos that are separate on these three databases.
And lastly, you all will be using MLA style to uh, document where your information comes from and you can use an MLA guide that the library has on uh, the home page there um, so that's like the most common types of um, citations and sources that you will experience the Purdue Owl site is great um, I go there all the time they have you know how to uh, document a tweet if you want to even so all kinds of good information there and of course the MLA manual that you have maybe purchased or borrowed and you can always ask me or another librarian so again be sure to check out the database uh, videos and you can always contact me if you have any questions about your research and have a great day